Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the How to Barbecue Ride podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, and joined by my lovely wife, Miss Southern Shell, and Tyler over on the boards. Back for another week, y'all. How's everything going? Good. Good. That's... <laughs> it's going great. It's been a little crazy week, but yeah, we're Stop, making it. Got my stuff. I tried the new Starbucks this morning for the first time. What do you think? It was good. It was better than the Kroger Starbucks. Yeah, I ain't gonna yeah. lie. I liked it. It was fast. I mean, there was there was probably I don't know. It was probably eight cars deep, but it went pretty quick. How long were you in line? Mm, I didn't time it, but five minutes maybe. Oh, they were not long. Yeah, they, they were rolling service. like they were ready for you. They had the card reader out the window. You popped up there and did your thing and. They handed you your beverage and got my, they called it, I got the skinny. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> skinny caramel macchiato. Is that sugar-free? Said it was, or close to sugar-free, I guess. They close as they can make a Starbucks drink. I think it's got like 70 calories or something like okay. that. It's like, it said, when she punched it up, it said sugar-free or not sugar-free. Maybe it was. Sugar-free vanilla syrup and what low fat milk or non fat milk yeah. and whatever else they put in it. So, so all the sweetened stuff. Yeah, all the sweetened sure stuff. Yeah, it, it's kind of got that a little bit of a Splenda flavor, but it's pretty good though. I always go for a blonde espresso because like blonde is naturally sweet. So yeah. I think the Grande uh, Blonde Ice Latte only has like fifty calories or thirty calories. I have a new one. It's really, really good. Do you get like a triple or? Uh, no. I mean sometimes, but usually if I get a venti, it already has a double Trip, shot of yeah, espresso. So. Yeah. Really That's good. what I got. I told him to triple, though. <laughs> she said, it's already got two. I said, triple, didn't I? <laughs> I know what I'm about. I need my fiend. <laughs> um, so I started off the day great. I got some energy. <laughs> uh, you are doing a rib demo in Cleveland, Mississippi. I am. October I'm, 13th. I, do you know I've never been to that contest? Yeah, it's, so it's a barbecue contest. Yeah, it's in Cleveland, the, Mississippi. O- Cleveland Oktoberfest, I think, so, and that's where Delta State is in Cleveland. And it's always, it's always been a big deal, but there's always been something going on in October. I mean, October's a busy month for us. It's very busy. But they asked if we were interested in coming down and doing something, and I thought, you know what, that's a good reason for me to go to Cleveland and see what that contest yeah, yeah. is all about and have some fun, see some people I know. And so it turned; it wasn't going to be a demo at first. They were just saying, would you come down and do the light in the grill? They always do this big thing of like light it, the inaugural lighting the grill and yeah. kind of MC. And I was like, well, I can do that. <laughs> and then it turned into, will you do some demos? And I was like, well, yeah, I can do that. So we're doing it for charity, though. Yeah, it's a fundraiser. It's, yeah, it's a it's fundraiser a- thing. I'm, do you know the... Uh, it's for, it's going towards the junior league, and they're going to oh. use it for like a, their kid Christmas. Oh, great. Thing that they do down yeah. there. So Good yeah. deal. So I, th- and I think it's, I mean, they're not charging a whole lot. It's 25 bucks. Yeah. So you go in and get a rib class for 25 bucks. It's like a 45-minute demo. Yeah, and it's going to be like, don't think it's going to be how to cook competition ribs. Like, well, I'm going to kind of show you how to do competition ribs in your backyard. That's yeah. what it's about. How to take competition tips and apply them to backyard. Yeah, because nobody wants to eat the competition stuff at home. No. I'm it's sure we'll of, touch on it. But. The, the title I'm working on right now is Competition Rib Competition Style Rib Secrets for Your Backyard, but that's a working title. Yeah, there you go. We're still working on that one. But it's going to be, there'll probably be about, is it about an hour demo or something like that, hour and a half? And there's two no, of them? No, it's like 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. It'll be a 45 minute demo and yeah. then like 15 minutes of talking. Yeah, talking and shaking you're gonna hands. Get to, you're going to get to try some ribs, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, and I'm sure we'll do something else, too. Um, I started thinking about this. Do you think ribs are like one of the only comp recipes that you can apply, to, like that you can actually take those tips and apply them to backyard? Mm, no, chicken you probably could. Chicken and could. and I would say you could brisket for, a, you know. For some You're probably not going to. I would, like, if I'm doing brisket at home, I kind of cook it like competition, but I don't inject it and do all the crazy stuff to it, you know. So what do you mean you cook it like competition? I mean, I still cook it the same temperatures and make sure it gets done and season it the same way. I just leave out all the phosphate injection and all that stuff, that moisture retention stuff, just because I want to eat the brisket. I don't want to, you know, hurt my guts when I'm eating yeah. it. But, I mean, it's it's not as rich, you know. It's more of an eat. Like, you could slice you some brisket and sit down with a plate and eat dinner instead of just, it's just one bite overload, you know, sauce. To, man, why do they sauce brisket so much now? I'm That's my pet fan. peeve with brisket. I don't like, 
a lot of salt. I mean, I don't mind like some of the beef juice that cooks out, the au jus or whatever, mixed with a little barbecue sauce yeah. and just to keep the brisket a little moist, keep from drying out. But this painted up shellac barbecue sauce all over every edge of the slice, and that's what they're turning in now. I see boxes that people post online. It's just sauce to the max. And it's sweet, too. And it's super sweet, yeah. I hate sweet brisket. I do, too. I'm not a... I not want a fan it savory of savory and brisket. peppery and that's how I want it. Beefy, smoky, savory, beefy. Um, you know, and, and you get that from the 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 azure that comes out of it. You know, all that all that goodness, all that goodness can be you can separate the fat off of it and use that to keep some moisture on if you need some moisture. But man, could you take that um and actually like maybe cook it down, reduce it? I'm sure you could, and, and, and get it down to a gl- uh, like a demi glaze almost. You could just yeah. cook it down, cook it down, cook it down. You know, and it would really be concentrated. And that'd be a great sauce if you wanted to take the time. So I used to my comp brisket sauce was it really wasn't. I guess you would call it a gastrique because <laughs> what's a gastrique? <laughs> it's not a. I like it's not so much a words. sauce or. It's more of a reduction. So look at yeah, that's a shell's learning corner. What is a gastric? I got one for you this week. Too. The only reason why I knew that word is because I was up doing that, and there was some chef there, and the guy got me to come up and do a, and teach him how to cook competition brisket. And I was making this sauce. And he said, "Oh, you're making a gastric." I was like, "Okay, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm doing. I call it brisket sauce." <laughs> it says it's a <clears throat> sauce made by reducing sweet and sour ingredients, typically sugar and vinegar. Well, so. I don't put sugar in it. No, you don't. But but it's got so mine was like a. Um, it starts with vegetables, so I start with mus- uh, garlic and onion, shallot and onion. Sweat that down. Add mushrooms. Sweat that down. Hit it with Worcestershire and soy. And reduce that by half. Then I hit it with red wine, like a big cup of and and so I was using like a. It was called a sweet red. Mm-hmm. And so it did have it's it like wasn't a table red. I yeah, kind of like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something like that. It's not like a cab. I've used a bunch of them, but I just like that sweet red. It was a Robert Mondavi or something like yeah. that sweet red that we used to get for like it's like a five buck bottle of wine. But it was a, you could drink it, you know. Yeah. And that's what I would use, and I'd fortify those wine flavors. And then at the very end, I'd come back with like two cups of beef broth, and I would reduce that down. So it's all these flavors concentrated down, and that was my. Uh, brisket sauce or wrap sauce, and it took like an hour, hour and a oh, half. Oh yeah, it was a it was a thing. It was stages of reducing down, reducing down. And I would do it every you know Wednesday night, sometimes Thursday. Yeah, night, sometimes but yeah. yeah. And I you know and we were usually trimming, per, you know, getting our sauces ready, and you would make that yep. that brisket sauce. And that was so that was I really liked the flavors of it because it reminded me of something they would serve over beef at a fancy restaurant when they would bring out like that wine, red wine reduction shallot sauce or peppercorn sauce or something like that. But you would actually strain it with a mesh strainer? Yeah, just to get, I'd get all that stuff out of it. I just wanted the flavors. Yeah, because I would come back, usually we were busy and hadn't eaten dinner and I'd come back and eat a couple mushrooms. Yeah, they were good. Really good. I always said I could tell if the brisket was going to win or not. How good the mushrooms were in the the sauce. (laughs) But that was a really good sauce I used to do for brisket. So if you were going to do like, what what tips would you take for chicken and apply to backyard cooking? Competition. Um, I got a few I thought of. Cooking them in butter. <laughs> that was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you ever had butter chicken? Is it good for you? Heck no. Do we cook stuff that's good for us? Heck no. We're not about the healthy living. <laughs> we're about delicious living. All the vices. That's a good t-shirt. Delicious yeah, living. Delicious living. No, I'm I'm about the I'm more of a vice man than I am a. Uh, it's not like I'm trying to be Mr. Longevity. You gonna be here at 100? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but my 52 years were fun. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I make it longer than 52. But hey, <laughs> something's got to get us. Um, I also thought about seasoning under the skin. Yeah, if you're cooking, skin that's on. a good way to do it. Yeah, I mean, so would you? Would I take the time? Like, if I'm just cooking a bunch of thighs to eat at home. I'm probably not. I'm not going to scrape them. I'm not. Okay. Now, would I cut some I don't excess? Think anybody scrapes anymore? Do they? Yeah, there's some, yeah. There's still people okay. that scrape skin, but I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't bother doing that anymore. I'd trim the excess fat off the side just because I don't like. I don't like to eat the big hunks of fat on a thigh anyway. Yeah. So I probably would trim that up. But as far as pulling the skin back, and seasoning under it, absolutely. Uh, you know, cooking it hot, having some butter in that pan to get it good and tender, and then setting the sauce at the end, absolutely. Those are all solid. Easy backyard techniques for cooking chicken. 
you want to get real crazy, jacarding it. Yeah, yeah, you could even do that. You could even do that helps. Uh, helps that skin. It helps really. that skin render. You don't have to, yeah, because all the fat can get out. You know, yeah. it's got a place to go, and you kind of broke it up some, so it's not solid, solid mass of fat under that skin. It's kind of broke up, and it'll, and you can bite through it because it's tenderizing that skin. When you cook it back on, it sticks, and then you could, you know, bite right through it easy. You should card the crap out of a chicken thigh, cook it in butter. Can't be bad. It's so right? good. It melts in your mouth. So I saw, and I've got to try this. I don't know if I'm going to try it on the black stuff or the griddle top, whatever griddle you got. But there was a, I saw a guy on TikTok and he had like a glass casserole dish and he put it on his black stone and he put, I'm guessing two or three pounds of butter in it and herbs and a bunch he, of minced garlic. I'm, I'm following. And let I'm all that you. melt. And then he had a big like tomahawk ribeye and he put it over in that butter Raw. Cook, yeah, raw. Not seasoned, not anything. All right. Um, you know, he didn't, I don't think he did season it. He seasoned it would come out of the butter. And then he, like, stuck it down in this butter bath, basically. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, like, completely submerged because that casserole, it's just like a regular macaroni and cheese casserole dish. Or yeah, whatever. like a 9 by 13. Yeah, so he had to flip it, but he he left it in there. And he didn't say what internal temperature or whatever. I'm guessing 120-ish. Is when he like, pulled it out of the butter or whatever, one fifteen, somewhere in that range. Uh, it's almost time? like uh, reverse searing it in in a butter bath. Is what he was doing. Yeah. So he's cooking it in the butter, and you could do that on a pit, easy. You don't have to have it on that blackstone. You could just put a pan of butter. Yeah, but the blackstone's going to give you the crust. Well, no, no, no. Well, say okay, so that's what he did. So once he got it out of this butter, was it? It looked like, kind of like something looks out. It comes out of sous vide. How it's all yeah, gray, gray and. I mean, delicious buttery looking, <laughs> but, but kind of gray. You know, it don't yeah, have the color yeah. you want. So then he had him like a. Was it, there time? Sorry. It, it didn't say a time. Okay. It was just, you know, to TikTok. So it's not like a full recipe site. It's yeah. just giving you an idea. And there might have been in the comments, but I didn't go check that out. But And so once he picked it up out of that butter by the bone, he had like this cutting board or platter or something with his. It was like salt and pepper, I think, because all it was on it, of course, like TX. Mm -hmm. And then he just pressed it down into that. Flipped it and pressed the other side and then threw it right on the blackstone top and to get the sear on it. Seared both sides and he cut into it. And I was like, man, that looks good. I want to And he try put that. some more butter. As it was cooking, he'd take butter out of that where he cooked it yeah, in and, and drizzle it all over the top. Like, how good? How good do you think that was? It was delicious. It had to be. It had to be, right? So what I was thinking, what if you did, I mean, fillets or smaller steaks and you just had that big trough of butter, melted butter. And you were cooking them in it now. A trough of butter. A big trough of butter. Just good old salted butter. Don't go the unsalted route. People tell you it's going to burn. Loud, but that's bogus. I don't believe it. I ain't never had the trouble using salted butter. If I'm cooking meat, I'm using salted butter. If I'm yeah. baking, I'm going to use unsalted butter. Really? That's. Do you use salted butter when you're baking? Well, you I like salt. Yeah. yeah. I think salt, you know, needs to go with yeah, the sweet. I mean, but... I could see it, though. Buttercream icing. Would you use salted butter? Or would you use? Yes. That might I be pretty good, butter. actually. Because it's not enough to tell, like, uh, yeah. this is salty buttercream. But anyway. But it gives you the balance. Yeah, a trough of butter. <laughs> let's That's where I'm at. Trough, let's get back to a trough <laughs> of butter. So I'm down. i got to try this. So what, did, when it was done, did it have, like, that crust? Yeah, yeah. It, got, yeah, it had the it had crust. Had like, brown mahogany. Seared, yeah, yeah. Was it as good as a cast iron? I don't know. I mean, it's a flat top. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it did, you know, it did get, you got that kind of browning action going on there and it got crusty. Um, it probably would have, it probably needed a weight on it. So it would get maximum, you know, pressing it down. He pressed it some, but I think if you really wanted to get it. Like get a, a weight. Yeah, yeah, steak weight and sit on top of it. I got to try it though. Let's do it. I got to try it. That'd be a good recipe. You could just yeah. sell this on TikTok. Sell it on TikTok. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm all about trying some other people's stuff that do stuff that's good. I can't imagine it being bad. You could use the trough of butter for everything. That's, that's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> Any other cuts you wanted to. I bet little pork tenderloins would be good cooked in butter like that and then just seared off on the grill, not even the flat top. Just throw them right over the fire. Boiling it in butter. That's a, that's a mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> um, Saturday, you cook catfish. I did. That's what Michael wanted for he. So well, let's go to Friday first. Okay. He had he we got said Michael, it's your birthday. It was his birthday last Friday, fifteenth. Yeah. We said, when do you want? You know, where do you want to go to? We let him pick the restaurant he wanted to go to, and I don't know how he 
decided to do this, but he wanted to go to Texas Day Brazil, He's which been is wanting to go. I don't know if he heard some other kid talk about it, but he's he had to. to yeah, we've never took him there, and I hadn't been there in years. I couldn't tell you the last. Probably it was pre COVID or yeah. way, way before that. Probably, maybe it may have been six, seven years since I've been to that restaurant. It's it's pretty good. What is Texas Day Brazil? So it's a Brazilian steakhouse, and it's one of these places where you go in and you play a flat flat fee. I think it's fifty two dollars for dinner, and they like they've got this first they. You know, you sit you down, take your drink order, and they say, okay, help yourself to our delicious food bar. <laughs> and so it's like a fancy seafood, or it's like a fancy salad bar thing. They've got all different kinds of stuff. Um, and I guess they, they probably want you to fill up on that first. Probably. So it's probably cheaper on them. And then they, but the best thing on it was the lobster bisque. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, what kind of salad bar has lobster bisque <laughs> on it? So. That was the first time Michael had lobster bisque. He was like, this is delicious. He's called it butter soup. <laughs> yeah. It's like butter soup. With a little lobster flavor. So, you you know, you go and you get your little plate of that stuff. Cheese. It's like a charcuterie. They've got a lot of charcuterie. They yeah. had smoked salmon. They had, you know, they sauteed the mushrooms they had, like in the gravy. Oh, i got to figure out how to make those like that. Me too. The, it was, instead of having like butter and Worcestershire, how we normally cook down our mushrooms, it was almost a gravy. Yeah, it was like mushrooms in gravy. Do, yeah, but it was almost, it wasn't like a traditional beef gravy. I don't know, but we're going to. Gonna do it. Maybe it's a mushroom gravy. Huh? It could have been. I don't know. I mean, I, I think. Well, I mean, what I really think they did was like, let's put cream of mushroom soup <laughs> in this thing, and we're gonna add beef broth, and we're gonna put these mushrooms in there and just let them cook down. And because they were just, I mean, oh, they were so like almost beefy tasting. Yeah. And the mushroom texture was. I mean, it was really good for a for the salad bar element. I mean, but then you've got these little cards. When you sit at your table, and it's like one side's green and one side's red. And if you turn it to green, these gaucho dudes, which are like waiters with big swords, full of meat. They just walk around the restaurant, and they'll see your cards flipped over, and they'll come over to you, and it's like, would you like to try this? (laughs) Could I interest you in this? And so we had... The the best thing I had was the flank steak, and I'd never had flank steak that good in my life. I agree. It was surprising that that was yes. the star of the show. It really was because I'm thinking flank steak. Do I even really want to waste time on it when they've got picanha walking by yeah. and then filet mignon and all this other stuff? And the flank steak, it was thicker than any flank steak I've ever. It didn't bought. look like a flank steak. No, steak. but it was like flank steak that had been rolled up kind of on the sword, um, and it was probably as thick as a pretty thick brisket. Yeah. You know, because normally you think flank steak is pretty thin and you stuff stuff with it or cut it up into strips for fajitas or something like that. No, this, they cut a slice of it off. And it was like, they tell you everything's coming out medium rare. Is that what they tell you? Yeah. And if you want it any more or less, you can ask them and they'll bring it to you some kind of way. And, but medium rare is, that's my go to. So, and they sliced it off and I saw it. You get these little tongs that as they slice off, they got this big knife and as they slice it, you kind of catch it. <laughs> And you put it on your plate. And it's like one piece of meat at a time. You know, they don't just buy. I guess you could wait. Like get They'll your ask plate you, you want meat. more, you know? Oh, they'll give you, you whatever want you want. Slices? You want two You will. Slices? You can seriously injure yourself at Texas. <laughs> you Day have if That's why we hadn't gone back. <laughs> I did. I made a. We went one time. Got like into a, my cups. An anniversary or something. Yeah. It was bad. It was like a meat coma. <laughs> I was sick for we, a week. We were supposed to go out and have fun afterward. Yeah. Nope. There was no party in that night. It was back to the hotel. <laughs> It was, Shell, will you rub my belly? <laughs> I was like, you're never going back to this restaurant again. You're not allowed back to them. I can eat meat. <laughs> I controlled myself this time. I tried I tried pieces of stuff, and I didn't do too much on the salad bar thing. I did get me a little cup of lobster bisque. But the uh, the picanha. They were not calling it picanha. They called it sirloin. Sirloin. And you said, is this picanha? And he was like, yeah, yeah. I guess just. I mean, most people don't in our yeah, area don't yeah. know what picanha is. I recognized it. And it had that little crispy fat on the outside that was edge. the second best thing yeah that was the garlic the garlic uh was a garlic sirloin too yeah, or something like yeah. that that was delicious and the little fillets were good yeah bacon wrap fillets i normally get really excited about the lamb because i've had some really yeah. good lamb there before but eh, it wasn't hitting on much yeah i'm not a huge i'm not a fan of lamb it's okay but I didn't mess with anything. I didn't get the sausage. I didn't get any of the chicken. Why am I going there and eating chicken? That's what Michael said. You know, they're walking around with these little chicken legs and chicken pieces wrapped in bacon and stuff. It's like, man, I, I cook that all the time. <laughs> bring the, the good stuff. Yeah, bring the good stuff. Yeah. And I think, 
first of all, they either marinate it or season it pretty good. And all of it's different, though. It's not like every piece of meat you get tastes the yeah. same. Like the flank steak, it had to have some kind of marinade or sauce or something they added at the end. It wasn't like saucy, but it just had a whole different, you know, flavor explosion. Yeah. I'd go back and just order flank steak if they'd let you. <laughs> you know what? I saw they had, so I saw this when I looked up on their website. They had, like, you can order to go. Now, how does how do you think that works? Are you sure it's not just the salad bars to go? or I don't know. But I don't see how. I, mean, I guess they had to figure something out during COVID when the restaurant shuts down. Yeah. So maybe that's when they incorporated it. But it seemed like, like you could order. I, mean, I don't like. I don't think they. I didn't even see a menu. Now, they just assume this is what you're getting when you go. So I don't know if you can order the stuff individually if you wanted to or what. But you know what that means. I got to go back. <laughs> <laughs> but Saturday you cooked catfish, fried catfish. I did, and that's what. And we let him pick because we were all we did Saturday was watch football. We let him pick what he want, what he wanted the food to be. So he wanted what do you want? At first, it was like he wants corn dog. <laughs> it was like corn dogs and cheese dip for lunch, and catfish for dinner. So I said, like, hey, "That's easy." <laughs> you handled the corn dogs and the cheese dip. He was the only one. It's just rotel, dogs, yeah. like crock pot rotel. But you did a, a like a white queso version of rotel. It was really good. I just used or queso blanco. Yeah, I just used the queso blanco Velveeta instead of the original yellow, Velveeta. The yellow dyed. Yeah, and I added a can of green chilies. <laughs> yeah. And a cream cheese, I think. Yeah, and a box of cream cheese. <laughs> I forgot about <laughs> Excellent that. Excellent for you. And a lot of grande gringo. Yeah. yeah. And pico and cilantro to serve with it. So that was good. And I was hoping for leftovers because I had bought, I found these buns. They were all soft. I was like, that's going to make some great leftover catfish po' boys the next day. Yeah. Bought lettuce. I knew you had tartar sauce and stuff. I cooked a whole box of catfish. Like no catfish left A over. case. I don't know. How many pounds of box was that? Do you know? Uh, Four? It was a pretty, Three, I mean, four, I counted. Five? It was like. I don't remember. I think it was two dozen. I think it was 24 pond raised catfish fillets. And. And other people came out. Yeah. Yeah. We had some other yeah, people over. Yeah. And I did. So, man, I, my thing is with catfish, you've got to season it and let it sit and air dry a little bit. A lot of people throw it in some kind of marinade and keep it wet, then try to batter it and all that. Man, the, the drier that fillet to me, the better because it gets crispy. And so what I that do is comes down to your breading. Yeah, the so wet I, breading is thick. Yeah, that's it right, and it makes a thick, thick crust coffee. on it. I don't like a thick. Yeah. I like a thin, crispy batter on my catfish. And so I, when I, you know, they come froze. We buy our local grocery store sells like pond raised Mississippi catfish. I mean, we're Mississippi. We got the best catfish in the world, and and you can get just awesome catfish at our grocery stores. And so you get them and you let them thaw out. And it's okay to put it in some – they're individually froze fillets when you open them. I guess they flash freeze them to where they don't all stick together. But you just let them uh, – put them in a little water and they thaw out pretty fast. And then I always take one of my uh, pork racks and put it over a sheet pan and just lay those fillets out and let air get on them. Let them really, you know, thaw really well. And then I let them sit, but I season them with some AP and some King Crawl. I always hit them with that. So it's kind of like a dry brine. You're not really brining them. You're just getting some seasoning on these fillets yeah. before you do anything. But you could use any kind of all-purpose. Oh yeah, any kind of all-purpose seasoning or, or you know whatever you want. Cajun style seasoning would work. Uh, just watch the salt. You don't get them too salty. They need a little salt though. Yeah, they do. They do. And then after they sit there for about an hour, I bread them and I just dump like cornmeal in a ziploc bag. You could use a fish bread. Like Louisiana makes a good fish bread, and there's Zatarain. There's a bunch of different ones. If you got a favorite one, but I just like cornmeal, yellow cornmeal. Do you season I season that? it with the same thing. I'll add a little bit of AP and a little bit of King Crawl. And then I put about, you know, three or four fillets in the bag at a time, shake them around, put them right back on the rack. And so by the time I go through and batter them all, and it takes about a pound or two of, of breading probably to get them all done. You don't want it super thick. You want to, you can, you can throw them all in there at once and just kind of mix it around. Just make sure they're getting coated good and then shake off the excess in the bag. And it's just a cleaner way to do it. And once you get them all breaded, you need to let them set again. How long do you let them sit? Uh, this? probably thirty minutes this time. You just want them to air dry and having them on that. You got to get them on a raised rack. If you lay them on something flat, it's gonna pull some of the breading off the the raised rack. Let's air circulate under them, and then get your peanut oil hot, three fifty, and fry them dudes. And they don't take long. I'm talking, you know, six minutes maybe. Six minutes. Yeah, I, I mean, I f- fish I kind of got an internal temperature. Catfish do. Like when you drop them in, they go to the bottom of the basket, and when they come up and float, and you shake that basket a little bit, and they kind of flip around, they're they're ready. They'll stop kind of frying, slow down. But usually, like on mine, I'll run 
basket of fish and then some fries or, you know, basket of fish and the husk puppies. And by the time I get them all. Oh, is that cooked, what you're doing? So you got two baskets and one yeah. of them's frying your extras? Yeah, my sides is going with it. So I, we did fries, hush puppies. That's smart. I did some shrimp. Michael, uh, did you just throw the shrimp in there or did we just kind of did those? Uh, I they just weren't, kind of wanted to say they, they were weren't terrible. That good. It was like fried breaded shrimp already. That would have been better if we would have breaded them ourselves. Yeah. we. Uh, I was like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. But we did. I did. I cut up a red onion and the pickled red onion and catfish are so good together. I got to have like four things when I'm eating catfish. List them. Tartar sauce, homemade tartar sauce, yep. blue plate mayonnaise. I'll go. Let me tell you how I make that. Go ahead and list your four things. Okay. We'll come back. To so tartar sauce. sauce with blue plate, lemon wedges, hot sauce, pickled red onion. That's the perfect goes with accompaniment for catfish. For whatever you want to do. For whatever. It? Yeah, I just think fried catfish with those those that goes together. Yeah. If you want to make, a if I go to your sandwich? fish fry and you don't have tartar sauce, red onions, and, and hot sauce and lemons, I'm probably going to be upset. <laughs> I might have it with me. I'm coming. In, a lot of times, if I was going to, cat, I'm bringing the tartar sauce, and then I'll have my other stuff too. You're so that guy that'll yeah. be like, they might not have pickled red onions. Let's bring. I judge them. a catfish restaurant. Like if you don't have good tartar sauce, I ain't eating your catfish. <laughs> I agree. And like some completely. people just eat it with ketchup, or like, they'll buy that store ball, that crappy store ball yeah. tartar sauce. Oh, it's Ugh. horrible. All right, so. Your tartar sauce, <laughs> you have one recipe. Yeah. And you made it to like feed a, a crowd. It makes a whole bottle of blue plate. <laughs> that's how I do it. <laughs> I know. Why don't we figure out a recipe that's maybe downsized a little I'd have bit? I have to do math. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for real. Why not? Hey, when have you ever said you got too much tartar sauce? Sunday, when uh, I was like, what the hell are we going to do with all this tartar sauce? <laughs> Make more catfish. <laughs> it's like a never-ending cycle. See, it was for your fish sandwiches. Don't you think a, a base of that would have made a great? Yeah, but you and your buddies ate all the daggum fish. <laughs> what had happened was we stayed up watching that Colorado game, and it got to be one thirty in the morning, and it was some hey, plate of old hungry. fish sitting over there. We said, we ain't not even putting that up. We got it. <laughs> some people didn't wait to eat till midnight that night. I cooked the fish at like five. <laughs> it was hey. Catfish is it was still good. Wasn't I it? like whole yeah. catfish. That's what, if it's cooked right and it's crispy. Still, you know, like yeah. you get it crispy the first time, it's really good. That I don't like it over. once it's been refrigerated. Like if it's just laying there, yeah, you know, it loses its crispiness. Yeah, that's when it becomes the best catfish. It's, it's the best when it comes out of the hot hole. Yeah, like that's when I want to eat it. Like and a lot of times I'll go ahead and fry the sides and stuff and get them a head start. I won't. I don't care if my fries get cold. I ain't there to eat taters. The hush puppies, you know, they fry fast anyway. But the fish, I want to go. As soon as they come out of the grease, all right, let's eat. Yeah. Let's, let's get them while it's still – you can break it and it's still steaming. That's perfect. So this is a good time to talk about blue plate and it how is. it's the best mayonnaise on the planet, especially so he, for your target. Here's sauce. what you do. You get you just a regular – I guess it's a 30-ounce. It, it used to be 32, like 30 now. It might be 28. Who knows with all this downsizing and stuff. But whatever size jar – of blue plate they have at the grocery store or Amazon or wherever you get your blue plate. <laughs> it's get, 30. It's 30 ounces. Yeah. So you start with that in a bowl. <laughs> Which and, is way too much. No, it's not. <laughs> it is not too much. You get you half a, half a white onion, and usually I grab a Vidalia sweet white onion, and I chop it up as fine as I can get it, like McDonald's hamburger fine. Yep. You know, so you do it super fine. And you could, if you had a way to mince it, that would be great too. Like food processing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be great too. But you want it chopped really fine. So that goes in with the mayonnaise. And then I take two kinds of relish. I use a sweet relish and I use a dill relish. Because if you use all sweet relish, it the tartar sauce don't taste as good because it needs a little sugar. But if you use all dill relish, it needs the sweet element to balance it out. So I use half and half. And I'll put it in a wire strainer. And if I had to guess, it's probably... Uh, probably a third a cup of each. You don't even have a recipe. Why yeah. can't you downsize it? <laughs> uh, that's why I don't have a recipe. It's just by eyes. I go half a jar, half a jar. So you want me to go quarter jar, quarter jar? I might have too much relish. <laughs> what am I going to do? Half the mayo and then a quarter of the onion? And it's just right. work. It works. Trust me. It's not like it's an expensive sauce. I mean, I got cheap, like great value relishes. <laughs> the blue plate's what you're spending the money on, but. I will spend my money on blue plate. It's five dollars. <laughs> at the most, sometimes three ninety eight right now. Yeah, sometimes it's two ninety nine. I'd like to get it for that. But that's this is less than a ten dollars sauce. So once you get 
your relish in, your onion in, your blue plate in. You just need to squeeze in some fresh lemon, like two wedges. And then usually I'll hit it with a little TX. And that's it. Stir it up. Do you ever put any hot sauce in it? Uh, some, not usually because it'll turn it like. Yeah. You, like if I'm making a remoulade or something like that, I'll hit the hot sauce. And you could put a few dashes. But if you want your tartar sauce to have like a pinkish tint, put some red in it. Yeah, yeah. I like it to be kind of white. And some, you know, some people put capers in their hot in their. I think that's kind of a northern thing. But. But yours, that's it. That's it. It's simple. Mayonnaise, it. onion, two types of relish. Two types of relish, and some lemon salt juice, pepper. and salt and pepper. Lemon juice, yeah. Oh, okay. That's all it is. It's really good. But you don't want to see the trick is. Don't you don't want it runny? So you yeah. got to get the juice off the relishes. You got to, like, the lemon juice is your only juice element, but if it's a juicy lemon, only do one quarter because you don't want to, it should not be soupy. It should be able to hold on a spoon because tartar sauce is not supposed to be a runny sauce. It's supposed to be kind of the consistency, a little bit less than mayo, but yeah, kind of a chunky. You want to be able to put a scoop on a piece of yeah. fish and have it like. That's right. Stay. Or or a hush puppy. It's almost or a fish dip sandwich. consistency. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of a dip consistency. I mean, it'll still come out of a squeeze bottle. But get you some scissors and clip the top of the squeeze bottle. That's what I do. You almost have to do that with every sauce, even yeah. barbecue sauce. Yeah. Just don't want to go through the finer Yeah, holes. just don't want to go through that little. Here in the south, a good catfish restaurant will have a squeeze bottle of t- homemade tartar sauce on every table. They should. They should. It should be a rule. Like you, can't put, you can't put catfish on the sign if you don't have tartar sauce on the table. And I ain't talking about a squeezy bottle of craft. That don't count. So... I've got something for you. <laughs> All right. Am I going to like it? I don't know. Airline chicken breast is not what you think airline chicken breast is. I just thought it was a little chicken breast. I, honestly, I've heard it. I, I don't know what it is. Is this Shell's Learning Corner again? Shell, Shell's Learning Corner. Right. Today we're going to learn about airline chicken breast. We're going to redact my statement about airline chicken breast last week, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to go back, you can just forget what I said. <laughs> That's my PSA. So airline chicken breast is actually a boneless breast, skin on, with the first wing joint and tendon still attached. So it's a drummy hanging off the side of a chicken breast. It is, but it has to be skin on, boneless breast. Skin on the drummy too? Skin on the whole thing, no bones in the breast. All right. Um, So that's what makes it different. Some people say it got its name because they say the breast looks like the airplane and the drummy looks like the airplane wing. But that's a stretch. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I bet they saw. I was figuring that was something they served on a airplane dinner when they used to do good dinners on the airplane. That's exactly right. Yeah, that part you are right. All about. right. It's also known as chicken supreme or a French breast or even a Statler chicken, and that name came from the Statler Hotel in Boston. Okay. So, like back in the day, that airline chicken breast cut, that French br- or chicken supreme cut, was like a fancy high end. Dinner, kinda, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. served it in nice restaurants, and and Pan Am back in the mid twentieth century. You know, they were trying to have that reputation for the best higher end, yeah. The, and and they made a point to do exceptional in flight dining experiences. Wow, can you imagine that? And they everybody smoked <laughs> like right in there, yeah. just from, from just, tip to tail. They were smoking. This. <laughs> can you imagine that? No. <laughs> Like ashes all over your chicken. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, the little chairs had the little. I don't. Y'all are probably too young to remember the. I've seen flip Ariel, up yeah. little. Yeah, I remember we were in like elementary school, and that was one of our field trips. They took you and let you go in a plane. They just I don't, oh, know, cool. I don't know how they arranged that. But yeah, they took the school bus for the kids ago. and let us go and walk through the plane. You know, I guess they weren't that busy, but. I just thought it was the coolest thing. They all had ashtrays. Yeah, <laughs> and they were probably still operational. Oh yeah, they were. Yeah. I remember when they quit, they passed the law that you could no longer smoke on the plane. Yeah. I was a kid, yeah. I want to say when we went on our honeymoon, which was in, you know, 08, they still had the plane we flew on still had the, the you could tell where the ashtray oh, thing yeah. were, you know. I guess it was, they're still flying those older planes. Yeah. They just retrofitted the seats or something. But So the idea of, so Pan Am um, had this idea that they're going to provide these high quality meals to the passengers. Um, and they wanted to surpass the culinary standards of the era. So they came up, this was their signature dish, was this airline chicken dish, and they did it for two reasons. Number one is that it could hold its flavor and moisture at those high altitudes but by leaving the skin on and all that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. The seasoning stayed really good on the skin. But the second reason is you could pick it up and eat it 
by the by the drummy. Yeah, no wife, no knife or fork needed. You could just hold on to the drummy. Gnaw it off. Gnaw off into that chicken that's, breath. That's classy. <laughs> <laughs> and then since Pan Am was kind of the leader in the industry, all the other airlines kind of was following. And that following became too. the airline chicken breast. Yeah. So what you've been cooking is just boneless, skinless chicken breast. <laughs> I, th- I honestly thought Native, it was. You know? I honestly thought it was a uh, a chicken breast without the tenderloin. Yeah. That's what I thought it was, like a cut down chicken breast. So I was wrong. Yeah. You need to name that. You can't buy those. I've never seen them for sale. You'd have to cut it yourself out of a whole chicken. They said that they're hard to find. If you want one, you pretty much need to go to a high-end butcher or ask someone to you know, have a butcher do it for you. You'd have to break down a whole chicken. Pretty much. You're going to sacrifice a lot of... Or you get two. Commercial (laughs) cuts, yeah. You get you get two flats and you get two airline breasts out of every bird. That's not too bad a deal. So now you got to come up with a name with these. Uh, come up with a name for these boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Yeah, bus station, <laughs> bus station <laughs> chicken. Yeah, BSCBs. <laughs> bus station chicken. <laughs> bus station chicken. <laughs> Greyhound chicken. <laughs> we'll call that one. <laughs> Subway chicken, maybe. <laughs> The subway, oh, the subway chicken. That'd be that would definitely be like a thigh. <laughs> <laughs> Down and dirty. It might be the back. <laughs> New way to sell chicken backs. <laughs> subway cut. You got those two little nuggets. In the yeah, back. that's the best part about the back. Yeah. But see if you trim it if you trim a leg quarter or thigh right, they take those out. The oysters, yeah, the little oysters. Back there, yeah. yeah. We don't. I guess you could leave them in there and call it the subway cut. So I got, I got something huh. from the community. Oh, good. Man, there's a. Con- are we getting to the controversial one? Oh no, I saw that. There's that one that's got like oh, 100 yeah, comments on it about the cleaning up the sauces or something. I would like to preface. I'm this. not changing any of my sauces. I'd like to preface the statement by saying. We don't care what you do. You can go live your life however you want to, as long as yeah. you ain't hurt nobody. That's me. Play on. Yeah. They're free. I'm not making fun of anybody, and I'm not going to call out anybody's name, but I am going to read this comment. Okay. This is Malcolm. Are there any plans in the works to reformulate the sauce line to remove seed, vegetable oil, sugar, et cetera? Those, since those are the two number one contributors to metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and cancer, you should really look for ways to eliminate them for what we cook. And eat. What are your thoughts in the comments? Uh, <laughs> the comments old. are cold. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the healthiest guy out there to be <laughs> making like, those calls. I, mean, right I care place? about people, but yeah, I'm not trying to. I, I got a sugar free sauce coming out. I mean, we had it once and then we had to go back and reformulate some stuff because the Worcestershire had a little bit of sugar in it. Yeah. I mean, it was like a minute, it was still enough to not register, but you can't say you got a, you know, lower sugar sauce if it's got it on the ingredients. So, yeah. So we're going through that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, hey, I'm all for healthy living. If you don't want to eat all that stuff, don't eat it, man. There's a lot of there's a lot of options out there, but barbecue is not one to try to do that in. <laughs> I know, but to I come mean, to us and yeah. be like, tell me what you're doing. We are sugaring you're gonna... and salting <laughs> and fatting and smoking. What do you think the smoking does? I mean, if I can't enjoy all that stuff, I might as well go put me in the ground, Jack. One of my favorite things is like I like my whiskeys well, and <laughs> no kidding. I'm what how bad is that time. for you? Is that bad for you? They're gonna try to reformulate Miller Light, make it better for you. No. What about my Copenhagen? Shit. Would you- <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a fit. Can you imagine like, going on man, that- no. Can you imagine going on Copenhagen's page and being like, excuse me, what are you guys gonna do about the Start fight cancer? <laughs> yeah. uh, that's kind of our business. <laughs> So one comment. They make a drug for that, maybe. <laughs> so one comment said, "It's like Matt Pittman says, I'm not here to help you lose weight. I'm here to make you happy. Love yeah. that quote. Yeah, Great. That's true. We're in the happy business. <laughs> yeah, fat but, and happy. But the original poster's response was, "Well, that blood is on Matt's hands. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he, this guy probably jogs." <laughs> For fun. For fun, yeah. <laughs> he runs for fun, not because somebody's chasing him. <laughs> Gary made probably my favorite post. He said, and I'm, I want to hang out with Gary. He says, please. <laughs> I want to hang out with Gary. 
<laughs> he says, please, can we just leave something for those of us hell-bent on happily killing ourselves by enjoying good food, good drink, crazy sports, wild women, and general debauchery? <laughs> Me in a nutshell. <laughs> I need that on a T-shirt. Yeah. He says, some of us are born to pirate heritage and it hasn't been bred out of us yet. <laughs> R.I.P. Jimmy. <laughs> That's so true. That is so, I mean, that's the way I feel. And he said, at this time, there's enough sauce and rub recipes out there to suit everyone's taste and requirements. Do you not care about yeah. the world? <laughs> <laughs> that one was my favorite. I don't I want to overpopulate the place. That's my problem. <laughs> yeah. Not into overpopulation. <laughs> We're helping to control it. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like this person was looking for a fight. They made that post and yeah. then answered every single comment really? with like a. Yeah. That's going to be in the year of highlights for sure. Yeah. Like with the comments and everything. And like, I usually like, I read comments all the time, like all of y'all's comments most of the time, but then every now and then a post comes along that I have to like fully invest myself. Yeah. Like yeah. Read every single one. That was one of them. That was great. I wanted to say, I think you're in the wrong place. <laughs> like, but Malcolm told me not to. So I just said, are you serious? If you were going to make, like, just say, let's, let's just talk about making, Making a sauce that doesn't have any of the bad stuff in it. It's like junk free of everything. Yeah. I, I just don't know if you'd make that a consumer. I think you'd be better off you definitely better making off that sauce at your at home. You know, so where you knew was going into it, that you knew you could control and all that. Because I just don't think that trying to make something like that for retail is ever something that people are just going to get. By. I mean, why? I mean, I, that's, people want something that's good, not necessarily that's bad. That's it's just one thing to pull out the yeah. sugar and, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's good to have some options like that. Yeah. It definitely is. I'm saying we probably all oh, wouldn't hurt to. It's what's what's the saying? Everything in moderation, even moderation. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, that's kind of you know. I, I don't really I agree with it, but I don't live by that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna accept more is better. <laughs> Always been a little salt's good. A lot of salt's better. A little butter. Probably why I'm in the shape I am. But hey, we spent 15 minutes talking about a trough of butter. Yeah, a trough of butter. Yeah, is that good for you. If you don't know who we are, then <laughs> <laughs> how expensive would it be to remove all seed, vegetables, all that bad stuff from a sauce? I don't know. And commercially make yeah, it. I don't know. There's no telling what it costs. It'd be ten dollars a bottle. And more than that. Before you ever sold it. Yeah. yeah. Before you ever sold it. Yeah. 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 It costs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it'd be possible. You might could do it like craft style, sell it like some farmers markets if you were yeah. making it at yeah. home and you had your batch down and wanted to do it that way and try it. And I'm off, you know, if someone wants to do that, go for it. Go yeah. for it. My sugar's good. <laughs> <laughs> I want my. Especially in barbecue sauce. Yeah. I can't imagine. Like, I don't know. Like, it's yeah. a very specific flavor profile that I would imagine is hard to replicate like that. Yeah. And my wife likes to do a lot of that kind of stuff. Like, we do tons of like, Figuring out how to make something vegan or something, but we do it all at home. There's not very many store products you can go buy. It's all pumped full of chemicals, and it's honestly worse for you than just mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. So just make it at home. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the you know what the best sugar free type sauce like that that I really like. It's that that uh, bishops. That, oh, no, it's that yep. bishops. Um, my buddy Steve brings me a bottle of it. He brought me one. It's not been too long ago. Thank you, Steve. But it's like a, it's Alabama it's barbecue sauce, but it's got to be like a Carolina or whatever. But it's it's like vinegar, lemon juice, salt, and cayenne. That's the only thing in it. It's and called, they probably well, people would probably get hung up over the salt in it. But man, it's so good. It's called Bishop's Three in One Stuff. That's it. Comes in a little squeeze bottle. And I think I, we may have talked about it before on here. Yeah. But it's I mean for me like if you if you're like do not want sugar and you do not want Process oils, do not want anything like that. And I don't know if you can order this stuff online or not. You probably got to go to Alabama and buy it. Amazon's got it. Oh, do they really? That's all. Twenty two fifty a bottle. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Dag um. Yeah. For some vinegar, some salt, some cayenne, some lemon juice. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, Ingredients: vinegar, what... salt, red pepper, lemon. Unless they're flat lying to you, that's what's on the bottle. <laughs> I mean, so on the bottle it says, "Shake me not, and I'll be cool." Shake me a little, and I'll be gentle. Shake me a lot, and I'll get hot. It ain't joking either. It must have like a quarter cup of cayenne pepper in each bottle because oh, really? it gets hot. But, but man, it's so good. I like. I love it. But because all that stuff settles, the hot stuff yeah, settles to the Yeah, that's why bottle. it don't mix. It don't go into solution. So you got your salt and your pepper, your cayenne and your salt in the bottom, and then you, I guess the lemon juice and vinegar is your element. And I don't know if it's a... cider vinegar or just a regular. It's If I had to guess, it's just white distilled vinegar. But it's good. It's really good. On pulled pork. 
That's about the only thing. I have done it on pulled chicken. There's other places online that are selling it for four, five, six bucks. You know, what yeah. you should. Oh, really? You can get a bottle of that for four bucks? Four ninety nine. Delivered? From... Deliver me a case. Oh, no. Oh. I'm sure they're going to charge you for <laughs> <Yeah>. shipping. <laughs> from Bruce's Foodland, yeah. yeah. It's good, and I don't know if it's in stores. I don't even know. I have never asked Steve where he gets it. Uh, he'll just, hey, man, I got you something. I guess they, whenever he's, and I think it's over in North Alabama. Uh, you might look it up and see what town it's in. If I had to guess, Muscle Shoals, I think he's got he's, he's got family in that area. That's why he, he goes and gets it sometimes. It's but, like he knows when you're out, too, because yeah. last time he drops off, you're like, yes, I just ran oh, out. I, did. <laughs> I, I was so happy to get that. But it's really good on pork. Because yeah, pork's kind of rich and fatty mm-hmm. anyway. It would make a good, like, baste when oh, you're yeah. cooking. I mean, it's kind of has that. It's a, it has that Carolina mop, you know, mop vinegar sauce thing going on with it. And it's good, though. Oh, they have one in Tupelo. No way. Yeah. The Bishops? The, I mean, is it a cha- franchise? Yeah, they have three locations. Oh, I've never. I'm making a road trip. I mean, don't quote me on this. I'm just. I could go through Tupelo later today. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? I'll have to pull this up. Yeah, yeah. Do some more research on that. Yeah, she'll yeah. learn me that one next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to call you out when you're wrong. No, Tupelo. Wow, I, I no think idea. all the locations are in Tupelo or that area. No, it's an Alabama thing. I'm pretty. It sure. is. Yeah, I want to. They have multiple locations, so maybe Coleman. I can't remember what town's on the bottle. It's on the bottle. I looked, but it's worth trying if you like vinegar. Yeah, if you like that vinegar. I, I'm not I, a big fan I, of vinegar hot or I just vinegar. don't like the sweet stuff all the time. That's yeah. why I like it. Well, I like it, and it's not typ- my typical yeah. barbecue sauce, you know? It's more of a pepper sauce. Like, if you think of a pepper sauce, that's kind of what it's like. Have you ever tried using it on, like, vegetables? I never have, but I bet it would be good on, like, greens or peas or something like that. Yeah. Probably be really good. Because it doesn't have a barbecue flavor at all. It's just, you know, acidic. Yeah. Yeah. You know? The vinegar that cuts a fa- it cuts anything greasy. I think that's why it's so good with it, because it kind of gives you that contrast. Um. So why are you going through Tupelo today? I'm actually going over to a live fire cooking event that Mossy Oak is doing. It's called the Foxhole Shootout Live Fire Dinner, and it's tonight. The twenty. If anybody's in the West Point area, I think tickets are still available. But they're doing it for St. Jude um, and a couple other charity events it's it's a charity event that mossy oaks hosting are putting on they've got a ton of stuff going on it's supposed to be what got me excited was the live fire cooking uh, they've got chefs coming in that are going to be doing a bunch of you know outdoor cooking stuff and it's a dinner do you think they'll have like stations set up i don't know i've never been to it it's i mean i, I just love that idea. i didn't know about it till a few weeks back and then i looked up the website and today and just to get some information about it and i'm just good good reason to go see my friends down there at mossy oak um do you remember that one demo we went to? I think it was a Koshan thing. And it, you walked down to different sections. You bought a ticket, and then you walked to different sections, and mm-hmm. everybody had a station, and they were cooking something different yeah, pork. Yeah, yeah. And you got to sample, you know, whatever it was. I love stuff I hope like it's that. I hope it's like that. That yeah. would be cool. Because you get to try so much. and Yeah. They, you know, they, and they you get to see them cooking. That. It's that was cool. like Koshan 555 deal. I don't know yeah. if they still. I don't know. COVID may have put a stop to that. It was cool. Didn't you? Judge it one year. I did when it came one to year Memphis. In Memphis. Yeah, I would definitely go back to that. That was fun, and I think they um, like they had you know they had open bars or wine and beer or something like that to go with your ticket or yeah. whatever. Uh, then once you leave from the Mossy Oak Live Fire Cooking, where are you going? I've got to go to Springdale, Arkansas. <laughs> what are you doing there? To the World Championship Squirrel Cookoff. <laughs> And I'm excited that? about that. I am judging that one. I got asked. I got asked if I was interested in judging uh, a squirrel that, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Joe Wilson. He's. Uh, he. I guess he helps. I don't know. I guess he may be the main man. I really don't know. But I think it's put on by the Arkansas Department of Wildlife. You know, Fish and Parks or whatever. But Arkansas, the, the place over in Springdale. It's like a. If I understand it right, it's it's like one of these government. You know, parks or something. They probably have some yeah. kind of headquarters or something there where they're doing this event. But they're, uh, any, anybody can enter it. It's your best squirrel dish and a side dish. Uh, I think squirrels got to be in the squirrel element. It's got to be like 80% of the recipe or something. They don't want you okay. doing like chicken and squirrel or yeah, nothing like yeah. that. 
They want it to be squirrel. And I'm I'm not going to say I'm a squirrel connoisseur, you know, <laughs> but – Hey, I can't I mean, even. I don't think I could tell you what squirrel tastes like. It kind of tastes like you know, cross between duck and possum. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's good. It's good. Sounds very enticing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sold you there. <laughs> sold you there. Huh? It tastes a lot like duck and possum. No, it's a, you know, it's a dark meat. It's a dark meat. It can be a little greasy if you don't cook it right, and it's you know. It's a dark meat. Basically a tree rat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> but they're having a squirrel. Uh, what I what I want to see is the squirrel skinning contest. And they're doing a squirrel shoot off all ages. So what they've got is BB guns. And the younger kids are using like a crossman, whatever BB gun. The old, and the adults like 16 and up. Are they shooting real squirrels? Yeah. Right out of the tree. No. <laughs> I think it's targets. I think yeah. it's some kind of. A pellet target and a BB target, but it's that makes sense. Uh, air rifles for the adults and just a B, uh, some kind of Daisy <laughs> four four nine BB gun or something. I saw it's going to be it. I figured it I'm excited to see what kind of people go to the world squirrel <laughs> cook off. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be my kind of people. <laughs> That's okay. exactly what I'm expecting. In eastern Arkansas, Springdale's like above Fayetteville a little bit, I think. So it's about you know it's a Five hour drive yeah. for us, but me and Mikey are going to go over there tomorrow. So we're going to go to Mossy Oak, and then we're going to drive from West Point back across and go over there. So we'll probably stop back about through here tomorrow because I don't think I have to be over there till like tomorrow evening, early evening or something. So, so are you judging Saturday? Just, are you judging squirrel and a side dish, or did yeah, they no, turn you judge them in both. together? Yeah, I, I really. You don't know. I don't, I'm not exactly. clarified on yeah. how they're turned in, but it is a squirrel and it is a side dish or accompaniment. So, and I imagine that's how they do it. Everything's scored on its own. It's not comparative judges. They've got you know normal criteria, and you score it. You What's know. first place win? Do you know? I don't know. It'd be cool if it's a squirrel dog <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> or cash. Yeah. yeah. If I come back with a squirrel dog, I've already told you. Mossy Oak. One of the auction items is a lab pup. Uh, with some training. Do you want a new pup or do you want a wife? I don't know. <laughs> got, got one pretty good duck dog laying over here beside me. So, but I bet she would like a little friend. <laughs> but, but I need the wife. <laughs> Didn't you say you just follow her around even if she left? So it'd be all right. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I'd be so mad if you brought another dog home. <laughs> another dog. About a cat. <laughs> you're thinking train is, <laughs> We're good. Train a cat. I don't want turtles, squirrel. squirrels, nothing. No right. more animals. No animals. I can live with that. <laughs> what if it's an outdoor dog? No. <laughs> you know I'm not going to let a dog. No. So I had you there. You thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> squirrel dogs don't live inside. <laughs> <laughs> just duck dogs live inside. I know you're playing. You're thinking like, if I just bring a cute little puppy home, she's going to be like. <laughs> Love the puppy. <laughs> yep. I know how that works. You're real quick to jump into the dog game. <laughs> <laughs> the dog game. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the dog game. Because I'm the one. Like there's some kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then I end up taking care of it. That's what you do. Oh, well, that's all the time we have today. <laughs> <laughs> Are you shutting me down that quick? Has it been an hour already? <laughs> Tyler. Hey, if you guys want to join <laughs> a group of like-minded pitmasters and awesome people, make sure you all head on over to the Let's Get to Cooking community over on Facebook.com forward slash group forward slash H2Q community. And if you like to see all of Malcolm's awesome recipes, make sure y'all go to hattobbqright.com. And I got to start working on a junk free sauce, totally junk free. See, just see if I can get it, what it would cost them. I'm intrigued now. <laughs> Name it after. Just yeah. Name it after that dude. <laughs> you mean like, is it the Gary sauce? Or <laughs> no. Was no. Gary the dude you wanted? To, he's the pirate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Gary's a pirate. All right. <laughs> I'm a pirate too, Gary. <laughs> or Viking. And I don't think they care about junk free stuff. <laughs> You're more of a Viking. They're more into pillaging, <laughs> raiding and pillaging. Well, if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, 
uh, Twitter, TikTok, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram. All right. Well, hey, we appreciate y'all hanging in here with us today, and we'll be back next week. I'm gonna give you a full report on the squirrel. Cook-off. I'm very curious about the squirrel. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get some footage and pictures and stuff so we can share some of it because I think it'll be cool. And if I can get Joe to come on the podcast, if no, if y'all don't know Joe, Joe is interesting and He's a character. funny dude. Yeah. He he hurts me just listening to his stories. So He'd maybe I can line man. that up, and I'm going to see if I, I can line up some other guests, too, while I'm there. So. All right. Well, appreciate y'all being here today, and we'll see y'all next week. We got one.